Out on the hill, social media feels irrelevant. But it's something the world of shooting and stalking has learned to treat carefully. Back in November, the world of Scottish deer stalking turned in on itself over a film of a stag shot in water. Deer stalkers reported deer stalkers to the police. While everyone agrees the film should not have been made, let alone reach social media, four months later and the police have exonerated the shooter, Fraser MacDonald, and the guide, Neil Rowantree. Well, it, well interestingly, the, the one thing, other than speaking to the local police officer, we heard absolutely nothing from the police until a week ago. We've always had a good working relationship with the local police, and, and I think keepers and stalkers in general are quite used to working with the police, so... Uh, the local officer asked me what the story was, we explained what, what had occurred, uh, she seemed satisf satisfied at that, she said I'll pass that on to my colleagues, and that was the last we heard. After the film came out, the police visited Fraser at home and asked him to surrender his firearms. They took my firearms away, they then told me there was going to be an investigation. You know, they felt I was going to be under a lot of public scrutiny, obviously with the video that was out there. So the last thing they wanted was somebody to come to my house and say, X, Y, Z, and for them to then turn around and say, oh, but he threatened me with that. I made an effort to contact Police Scotland. I, I, I telephoned them and asked to speak to their wildlife uh, crime officer. And uh, it takes, it's an awful palaver now. You've probably tried it, Charlie, to actually get through to the police. You, you can't, I mean, years ago you could phone your local police station and now you have to go through a switchboard. And, and what was fascinating is really, the, the first thing you got was nobody really had a clue what you were talking about. And eventually after about 45 minutes, uh, I got through to somebody in Dingwall who said I'll take a message for him and he'll call you back. What I wasn't aware is it would take four months for him to call me back. Everything seemed to go quiet. Um, never really heard anything from anybody until probably the first week in February. The investigating officer phoned me to tell me that he was starting his investigation and he was going to be in contact with me in due course. Um, they never came to interview me at all. Um, and then three, four weeks after that, they told me that there was there was no case, basically. And they'd done an extensive investigation into into the incident and they couldn't find any any evidence to press charges. I understand where the guy's coming from. He said to me, you know, that uh, a complaint or complaints have been made and whenever that happens, the police are duty bound to investigate these. And I mean, uh, I spent a lot of years as a special constable and, and my wife's a former police officer, so we know how the system works. So I, I fully accepted that. And he said that uh, with workload and other challenges he'd had, he'd just got around now to actually going with a colleague to the site and that they'd satisfied themselves that uh, no crimes had been committed, there'd be no risk to public safety, and that they accepted, having looked at the location, that it, it was as it, as it as it in fact was, that it was the dispatching uh, of a wounded animal. They said that, the, that no crimes had been committed, and that in their professional opinion, that it had been a safe backstop, and uh, that there was nothing further for them to do, and that they would go back to the complainers and inform them of that fact. The investigating officer passed it on to the firearms licence in Aberdeen. The chief inspector officer, he then phoned me to tell me he was happy for me to get my guns back. Um, I'm now waiting for them to send my licences back so I can then go and collect my rifles and shotguns from my local RFA. So what do we learn from this? While it's been going on, Neil has been running his deer stalking business as normal. He is clear that much of the reason he has suffered an investigation is because one of the shooting organisations condemned the film without finding out what was going on. Not long after it, it entered sort of the public arena, Scottish Natural Heritage or, or Nature Scott, uh, uh, as, the, as, the, as they're branded now, contacted me and, and one of their sort of senior deer officers phoned me up and said, we're hearing this, Neil, tell me what occurred. So I, I explained to him in, in the details of, of what had happened and he said, oh, I'm, sa I'm satisfied with that. And uh, they, they after took, took no part in it as far as I'm aware. And uh, shortly after that, the, the Scottish Gamekeeper Association spoke to me. Again, they said members had asked questions. Could I, could I tell them what had gone on? And, and I was happy to do so. But at no time did the Deer Society act in that way. They, when we contacted them to say we disagreed with their comments, they, they came back saying we, our, our statement is factually accurate and correct and we stand by what we've said. 
Neil now feels he has to resign from the British Deer Society. I've been passionate about deer my whole life and I, and I joined the, the British Deer Society as a nine-year-old child, which is a few years ago now, as you can imagine. It's, it's over 40 years ago. And uh, I, I feel that if, if I would like anything from this, I would, I would like them to apologise for the, for the way they've conducted themselves. I think they, they've left themselves with uh, little credibility. And, and, that, and that disappoints me, particularly when you see correspondence and you know that individuals took a position uh, against you without being fully appraised of the facts. Perhaps they'd have been better to be focused through a spyglass the, than a whiskey glass when they'd made their comments, Charlie. We asked the British Deer Society for a statement and it sent us this. We were disappointed that someone who is as well regarded in the deer world as Neil Rowntree did not stop the incident from being filmed. We all have a duty to ensure we do not bring our community into disrepute and the footage, with its accompanying commentary, was distressing and distasteful and clearly upset many people who viewed it. The British Deer Society received numerous complaints from the public after this video was posted and paramount to our charitable aims is the welfare of deer. If we feel that actions that run contrary to this are brought to our attention, then we absolutely reserve the right to comment. One shooting organisation attacked Neil and Fraser. Many stayed silent. Both Neil and Fraser are grateful to Field Sports Channel and to our viewers who backed them up. After the video went on the Field Sports Channel to begin with, a lot of people then started messaging me saying, look, we're really sorry, we judged you wrongly, not knowing the full story. And yet there was still a lot of people out there that had this negative view on the whole thing saying, you shouldn't have done this, you shouldn't have done that. Well, you know, I'd like to call those people out and say, if you were in that position, what would you have done? My hat's taken off to, to, to Field Sports TV and Field Sports Nation, certainly for, for support there was a lot of people that are your regular viewers that contacted us to say that we support you 100% here and uh, you guys as a team, uh, you, you were honest, you were pra practical about it, you wanted to know the facts and the details but all the way through I think you've played the role of an honest broker and I congratulate you on it.